Next video, we're going to do something really interesting. This is where chemistry actually hits the road, so to speak, it becomes really fun, at least if you like this kind of stuff. And what we're trying to do here is we're doing what we call a mass analysis. It's kind of like a detective story. You start out with an unknown sample. Let's say you have 0.3775 grams of an unknown compound, but you know that it contains chlorine ions. But you just don't know what the other element is. And you want to figure out what that other element is. How do you figure that out? Well, you first probably want to go ahead and dissolve this in water. There's a plan, a plan of attack here. So the first step, you want to dissolve your compound in water. So when you do that, so let's say you have a compound, unknown, and you pour some water in it. When you put H2O in, on top of that compound, you mix it together, you will probably dissolve that and separate the chlorine ions from the other ion, the unknown ion. So you end up with the unknown ion plus chlorine, and when you dissociate, dissociate uh, them in water, then you end up with a positive unknown ion plus a negative chlorine ion. All right, so now you've got them separated. What do you do? Well, you have a good way of getting the chlorine ion out of the precipitate by adding silver nitrate to it because silver nitrate causes silver to bond with the chlorine and build up a precipitate. So the next step, next step would be to add silver nitrate. When you do that, you end up with the following reaction. So we have silver nitrate added to the unknown ion and added to the chlorine ion and that will react in such a way that the silver will bond with the chlorine ion. So now we still have the unknown ion in solution, and then you still have the nitrate ion in solution like that. But at least you now have a precipitate that contains the chlorine ion. That will precipitate out. And let's say that you end up with this much of the precipitate. So you'll end up with 0 0.7255 grams of silver chloride. What do you do next? Well, if you can figure out how much chlorine you have in that compound of silver chloride, then you could probably figure out how much of the unknown you had in the original sample. So the next step is to figure out how much chlorine you had in your sample. So step three is the mass of the chlorine in the silver nitrate that is equal to the uh, ratio of the um, molar mass of chlorine divided by the molar mass of the chlorine, uh, the silver chloride uh, uh, compound. So if we find the molar mass, one mole of silver chloride, see how like that, so you add that together and you end up with uh, 5, 3, 1, let's say that's 3, 1, that's 4, 1, okay. So the molar mass of silver chloride is 143.35 grams. The molar mass of chlorine is 35.45 grams. So you take your sample, which was 0 0.7255 grams, so 0 0.7255 grams, and you multiply that times the ratio of the mass of chlorine divided by the mass of silver chloride. That will give you the mass of the chlorine ion. So we put in here the 35.45 grams, which is the molar mass of chlorine, divided by 143.35 grams, which is the molar mass of silver chloride. This ratio multiplied times the sample, the mass of the sample, will give you the mass of just the chlorine ion in that sample. So this is equal to, let me take a calculator, we have 35.45 divided by 143. 0.35 times 0 0.7255 equals, and you end up with 0 0.1794 grams of chlorine in your silver chloride compound. All right, so if this is how much chlorine you have in your precipitate, then we can assume that if we did a good job precipitating out all the chlorine, we had this much chlorine in your original sample, which means the remainder is the mass of the unknown uh, element. All right, so step four, the mass unknown x is equal to, well, we take the mass of the sample, which is 0 0.3775 grams, that's the mass of the unknown sample, minus the mass of the chlorine, 0 0.1794 grams, of chlorine and it gives you the mass of the unknown. So we take 0 0.377, oops, 
is again 0 0.3775, subtract from that 0 0.1794, and we get 0 0.1981 grams of the unknown, let's still call it X. So we have that much of the unknown. Okay, so now we're trying to find the molar mass of the unknown, which means we need to know the number of moles. And if we assume that there's the same ratio, the same number of moles of the unknown as the moles of chlorine in the original sample, which is probably a good assumption, then we just have to find out the number of moles of chlorine, which would then equal the number of moles of the unknown. So how many moles of chlorine do we have? That's step five. Now how do you find the number of moles? Well, we take the mass of chlorine that we have, the mass of chlorine, and divide it by the mass per mole, mass of chlorine per mole of chlorine. And notice that the mass of chlorine disappears, and since we have 1 over moles in the denominator, we end up with the number of moles of chlorine. All right, so the mass of chlorine is, where did it go? Right here, 0 0.1794 grams of chlorine divided by the molar mass, which is up here, which is 35.45 grams of chlorine per mole of chlorine. So it gives us the number of moles of chlorine. All right, so we take 0 0.1794 and divide that by 35.45, and now we have the number of moles of chlorine, which is 5.06065 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of chlorine, which is also the number of moles of the unknown compound, or I should say the unknown element X. So now we want to find the molar mass of that unknown, because if you know the molar mass, we'll know what we're dealing with here. So 6, the molar mass of the unknown x. Okay, so how do we find the molar mass? Well, if we take the number of moles of the unknown and divide it by, let's see here. No, we take the mass of the unknown. What is the mass of the unknown? Uh, there we are, right there. So we take the mass of the unknown. How about just writing the mass of x, the unknown element x, and we divide that by the number of moles, the moles of x. Because if we take the mass and we divide that by the moles, we'll get the molar mass. All right, so how much do we have? So we have 0 0.1981 grams of the unknown x divided by the number of moles, which is... 5.06065 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. That gives us grams per mole. And let's see, what would that give us? Times 0 0.1981 equals, and there it is, 39.1 grams per mole. Now, you may not realize what that may be, so you go to the periodic table, and you look it up, and guess what you'll find? There's one element on the periodic table that has a molar mass of just about 39.1 grams per mole, and it is potassium. Oh, that's a terrible looking K. Let me try that again. It is potassium. There you go. And so that means that the unknown compound, which had chlorine in it, had to be potassium chloride. And that's the unknown sample. Isn't that neat? It's just amazing how that can work with chemistry like that. So here you have an unknown sample. You dissolve it in water. So now you know that the ions are separated. You put in silver nitrate, which you know, after you learn a little bit of chemistry, that silver will bind with chlorine and precipitate out of silver chloride. You can then find out how much of what you precipitated out is actually chlorine, the chloride ion. And then you can figure out how many moles of chlorine you have, which is probably the same as the number of moles of the unknown in your initial sample. And then when you know how much mass of the original sample is the unknown, you know the number of moles, you divide one by the other, and you have the molar mass. And then, once you have the molar mass, you can look in the periodic table and go, that must be potassium. And that's how we do that.